Welcome to our weekly roundup of key business developments in Sri Lanka. I'm Nishani Figuera. Let's first take a look at the main stories for this week. Indian Foreign Minister in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka GDP grows for the third consecutive quarter. And wealth tax on resident sales to raise 100 billion rupees. In our top story this week, Minister of External Affairs of India, Dr. Subramaniam Jayashankar, began an official visit to Sri Lanka on Thursday. The bilateral visit, which highlights strong relations between India and Sri Lanka, is Jayashankar's first visit following the formation of a new government under Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The External Affairs Minister of India paid courtesy calls on President Ranil Vikramasinghe and Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardena. He also engaged on issues related to implementation of projects funded by India as well as proposed investments. The minister was also slated to meet with the opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, Tamil National Alliance MPs and parties representing the upcountry plantation sector. The Sri Lankan economy grew 5.3% during the first quarter of 2024, expanding for the third consecutive quarter. The industrial sector recorded a significant 11.1% increase. Growth was driven by exchange rate stability, easing interest rates and a turnaround in manufacturing activities. Meanwhile, agriculture and services sectors grew 1.1% and 2.6% respectively. ICT, education and health services saw a noteworthy decline. The president expects to achieve a GDP growth rate of 3% in 2024, beating World Bank's estimate of 1.7%. On a related note, speaking at the Industry Expo 2024, President Ranil Vikramasinghe expressed plans to boost the industrial sector by creating a new commercial bank and economic commission, an institute called Enterprise of Sri Lanka, to uplift the digitized green economy. Sri Lanka, in a last effort to push tax revenues up to 15% of GDP, will most likely introduce an imputed rental income tax on owner-occupied and vacant residential properties. The President in Parliament said that 90% of the houses in the country will not be subject to the proposed imputed rental income tax, effective from 1st April 2025. According to KPMG, the tax net for the government is only 500,000 units, and a tax of 200,000 rupees is required to raise the target to 100 billion rupees. KPMG also says clarity is needed whether the tax will be on lesser or lessee in case of rented residential property as well as if it would be applicable should a company be the owner or the lesser of a residential house. Such development comes as the government aims for a primary surplus of 0.8% in the 2024 budget with tax revenues to represent 12.4% of GDP. A larger primary surplus is expected to serve as a buffer against the high interest payments and domestic financing risks. On a related note, the government has submitted a comprehensive plan to the IMF on easing vehicle import restrictions. The IMF has noted that restrictions on vehicle imports has led to tax revenue losses of around 0.7 to 0.9 percent of GDP. Hence, the government is expected to ease restrictions fully on a face-by-face -face basis by 2025. The Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index in May rose to 58.2 from 42 a month earlier. The sharp turnaround was due to increases in new orders and production activities from more working days in the month. The service sector PMI also expanded, but at a slower pace. In our weekly tourism update, during the first 17 days of June, just over 62,000 tourists arrived in the country. In the year, almost 959,000 tourists have arrived. Daily arrivals were 3,683 in the month, up from the 3,617 recorded in May. In the month, India was the primary source market, followed by the United Kingdom and China. The All Share Price Index at the Colombo Stock Exchange was dull this week, as Sri Lanka is yet to finalize a deal with its private creditors. Despite this, the market saw net foreign inflows. Cable Solutions Limited, a subsidiary of ACL Cables, is to go for an IPO offering 80 million shares at 7 rupees and 50 cents a share, intending to raise 605 million rupees. At the Treasury bill auction held on Wednesday, yields on all maturities rose for the third consecutive week with the 91 and 180-day maturities rising by 50 basis points. Bids amounting to 329 billion rupees were received, of which 230 billion were accepted. 
The Sri Lankan rupee continued to depreciate against the dollar for the third consecutive week, with the central bank's indicative mid-spot rate ranging around 303 to 305 rupees. And with that, we wind up for this week. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel at the link below for regular updates on economic and business developments in Sri Lanka. Until we see you again next week, thank you for watching. Stay safe.